Welcome to the Leah Noel Design Co. page and happy Friday. Um, it is Friday night at six o'clock, so if you are watching me, you are probably painting or just getting home from work or um, just getting excited for your weekend. So welcome, and I actually had said I was gonna pop in here and do a tutorial for you guys. So that's what I'm doing. This is the moment I have. Um, so here we are. So this is what I'm doing. If you guys are catching the live, uh, you'll see L-I-V-E in red in the corner. So if you guys are here, I can see a few of you guys are on here. Go ahead and say hey and let me know that you're here. Hi, Anne, I can see you here. Thanks for being here, Anne. You're always here. So thank you for, for joining me all the time. Um, thanks for commenting too. Hi, Anne. Okay, so just comment, say hey, I'm here. Tell me where you're from. Do you paint furniture for a living? Do you paint furniture for a hobby? Do you paint furniture um, as a business? What do you, do you guys, you know, are you just getting into it? Let me know uh, your experience level of furniture painting. It's getting hot in here right now. Hold on, Ooh, it's getting really hot in here. Um, so today, all kidding aside, I am going to paint this table with chalk paint, with Dixie Bell chalk paint. Actually, it's already been primed and I primed it with Voss primer. Now, I said I would come on. I did a live the other night, and I was like, do any of you guys want to see how to paint a large, flat surface? Hi, Pam. Hey, Trina. Thanks for being here. And you guys were like, yes, we want to see how to do that. So I find the longer the surface, the flatter the surface, uh, the harder it is to paint. Not hard. I mean, it's not that hard, but I'm just going to show you how I do it, okay? But then, you know, you guys can either take the tips or leave them, whatever you choose. So I kind of have my camera backed up a little bit and I'm going to come over here. You probably won't be able to see my face. Like I'm going to cut my head off here. Hey, Florida sounds beautiful. You mostly paint for yourself, but you want to start doing it as a business. And that's wonderful. Yeah, it's a fun business to be in. Um, and you're smart too, that you painted all your furniture yourself because like I own like one piece of painted, well, a couple pieces of painted furniture, but I wish I owned a lot more before I started painting furniture for other people, because then I would have um, more furniture for myself. Trina, you're from Arkansas. We go way back too. Thank you, thank you. You've been in a lot of my tutorials, Trina, thank you. Um, okay, hey Rich, how's that vanity coming along? My friend Rich just picked up a vanity and uh, it's in a little bit of rough shape, so he's gonna fix it up a little bit before he brings it over to me. But we're gonna get started, um, and I'm gonna tell you guys what I used first. I went ahead and clear, I put um, Boss, B-O-S-S, -S, from Dixie Bell. Um, if you need a picture of the product, just you know comment and I'll take a picture of it. I'm not gonna walk over there and show you guys because I don't have it handy. But um, I used Boss primer, and you can't see the primer because it's clear. But I usually always use primer, especially on a piece like this that, you know, this will probably have baskets or something on it or books, and this is the top. So it's really important to use primer. Dixie Bell's Boss Primer has a little bit of a grip to it. So it, um, yeah, there's so many options, Sherry, you're right. You're, you are right. And the best, um, there are a lot of options. I'm gonna talk about that for a second. There are a lot of options that you can choose to paint your furniture. Uh, and there's no really, there's really no right or wrong way. Some people don't prime. I like to prime. I really like to prime. I, it makes me feel more confident in my work and I feel like it makes it easier and it troubleshoots the issues before you can even get started. So I chose Boss Primer because it's clear and it goes with the Dixie Bell paint. Um, I also, you know, you can mix and match brands. That's fine too. And, um, and I do that. But I found that the Dixie Bell primer actually, like, uh, I use, a lot of times I also use as primer Zinzer Synthetic Shellac, and it's smoother, and so the paint kind of just, like, it's hard, it doesn't grip, the Dixie Bell primer grips the chalk paint better than, like, the Zinzer primer, because I think the Zinzer primer is made more for, like, a, um, um, like, enamel-based paint, but I use it with chalk paint. So, anyway, um, I just use the Dixie Bell Clear Primer. And the reason I did that is because we are gonna paint it cobalt blue or tree frog green. Now, this is an eight ounce paint, and I asked you guys the other day what color we should paint it, and I think overwhelmingly you guys said tree frog green, but I only have eight ounces of tree frog green, and I'm not quite sure 
that I can cover this whole table with eight ounces. Should I try? But I have two cobalt blue, so maybe we should just do cobalt blue. I don't know, I don't wanna run out of paint. I mean, I have more tree frog green coming, but I kinda wanna, like, I don't wanna wait. So, what do you, what do you guys think? I'm kinda feeling cobalt blue, because I know I have enough paint, right? Okay, we're gonna go with blue. Um, I, I play things, I'm a, I like to play things safe, hence I like to prime. I don't like to take risks, so. I'm gonna shake up my paint. And I'm going to first start, I already put my boss primer on here, which you guys can always, you guys can, um, you guys can find all these products at the, um, I, I attached my affiliate link to this video because I am using all Dixie Bell products on this. And I do also like to, you know, like I said, with the chalk paint, it is nice to stay in the, um, in the brand because they all kind of work together. So what I did is I put the Boss Primer on here and I'm just gonna lightly sand it. Okay, and I'm gonna come down here. And just lightly sanding everything. Okay. And I'm gonna lightly sand this too. I'm not gonna paint the bottom with you guys because you really can't see it, so there's no point. Now this table is not a um, antique table. It's super heavy. It's a good quality table, but um, it definitely needed a primer because I feel like it's a newer table and some of that finish was coming off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe this. And I'm gonna ask you guys too, if you guys know anybody who, if you guys know anyone who are who is looking to paint furniture, please share this with them so that they can kind of get some good tips. Why sand after using Boss? Just to kind of smooth it. Um, if you really want a smooth finish, which we are going for a smooth finish, which is rare for me, um, but I mean, usually I only do smooth finishes on the top, you, if, when you sand between coats, it smooths it out, which is really good, especially for chalk. That's what chalk paint is really good for too. So, um, hey Gail. Hi Lori. Thanks for being here guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna dust it off. Can you guys see okay? All right. So, I'm gonna start, um, and since I'm doing smooth, I am gonna use, I am gonna use a synthetic brush, and I'm gonna, I'm choosing my um, oval medium. This is a synthetic brush from Dixie Bell, and I'm gonna start by uh, painting my drawers first, and then we'll get to the top. Hi. There's two Lori's on here. Hey, Lori, and hey, Lori. Okay, so when I'm doing the drawers, I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna paint down. So I'm gonna paint all the spots that I'm gonna use my paintbrush for. And I'm just gonna open my paint, and we're using Cobalt Blue from Dixie Belle. And I'm just, I like to start, I don't like my brush sopping wet when I start, so I'm just gonna like mist it. And you really don't think a lot of water comes out of this mister, but this thing's like, it's pretty damp. So I'm gonna start by, um, I'm gonna just start with my drawers. Look at that pretty color, oh my gosh. I will tell you guys, I don't think I've used cobalt blue by itself before. I just ordered a bunch more um, uh, tree frog green. I ordered, I think I ordered a big jug of it. Uh, I'm really excited to use the tree frog green. And this color is gonna be so pretty on this table by itself. And I'm gonna act, I will accent this with, um, I'm thinking you guys had recommended accenting it with 
the tree frog green and I think that is a great idea but we'll see I paint the edges of my drawers and this will take two coats of paint So I'm just pulling my drawers out first. I always take my hardware off first. This hardware, I'm not even gonna paint it because it looks, you know, it's, it's pretty modern. You haven't used it by itself either, Raylan. Thank you for sharing, Debbie. This is a great video to share um, if you guys are just getting into chalk painting or you guys know somebody who is, uh, not even just chalk painting, but like furniture. This is a good, like, beginner's um, tips. And though, like, I feel like every time, not every time, but many times when we're on Facebook or myself, I'm guilty of this. Um, you know, I'm showing something a little more advanced or, you know, a technique or how to use waxes and finishing products. And we don't ever go over the, the, the basics. And, um... And, and I want you guys to know, like, there's no right, especially if you're painting your own furniture, there's no right or wrong way to really do anything. Um, I, I like to prime, and I know many furniture painters that don't like to prime. In fact, the whole point of using chalk paint is that you don't have to prime. Um, the reason I like to use chalk paint on furniture is because I can blend it better. It's more versatile. It sticks really well. And it wears in nicely. Like it's it's it doesn't it's not like latex where it would peel. And it wears it just wears in nice. You can distress it. Um you can blend with it. And I like Dixie Belt because it's self-leveling. It's a self-leveling paint, and the color. It's very true from the point you put on the, your piece of furniture um, all the way to when you seal it. So if you can see here, I'm just kind of letting my brush hairs get in the, what would you call that, the crevice, the, the drawer right here. And sometimes the paint doesn't stick as well on the edges. Um, and so that's why I'll go back and do a second coat. Uh, another good reason why you want to use chalk paint on your furniture is, or if you are just beginning, if you get drip marks or anything like that, they buff out really nice. And then with Dixie Belle, you do not have to put a sealer over it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend not putting a sealer over it because it just feels dry. Um, but it won't, you don't have to. It has a built in sealer, which also you have to wash your brushes out right away or it'll kill them. But so I'm just gonna let my brush get in this crevice here. Oh, let me get my head out of the way. I don't know why it took me so long to use this color. I really like it a lot. Okay, so we're gonna get all these smaller areas with the brush first. And I'm just gonna go right into this one right here. Can you guys see? I feel like you can't see. Let me, um, you're loving chalk paint? Yes. I'm going to pull y'all in closer. Hmm. Okay. Let me pull this down. I will adjust a couple times in this video just to make sure you guys can see. Um, cause like I said, this is more, this is just basics. Hang on. 
it is a great color. Thank you for sharing, Colleen. Thank you guys, all of you guys who are sharing um, and joining me today. This is, um, like I said, this is just a good video if you are just kind of getting into chalk painting. And um, feel free to ask any questions and I'll answer if I can. Here's another way um, to kind of get in any spots that are harder to, like right here we have, you won't be able to see it on camera, but right here, we have like a spot that, a dent, or like, um, they're called wormholes, the little holes you see in wood. And they're actually like, it's just natural to the wood. Um, one of the ways you get in is you just put a little bit of paint on your brush and you just kind of like smack it. It's called steepling, I think. I think that's what it's called, steepling. And you just smack your brush. But I'm going to go ahead and get these um, around these corners before we do the top. Uh, another thing I was talking, my sister-in-law is so wonderful. She actually like came over and painted with me today. She did, she actually like prepped a whole piece for me. She's just so kind. Um, and we were talking about like whether you paint under the lip or not. So the question I get a lot, do you paint this part right here? Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, the blue is pretty. I love this blue. But um, she was asking me whether we paint this part here. And my answer, just my opinion, is that if it's like, if it's a dresser or something that no one's really going to see, I don't. On a table like this, I do. Um, like, you know, if you're laying on your floor and doing like your exercises or whatever, um, you know, you want to be able to see it. You know, you, you want it to look pretty underneath too, right? So here's the thing about getting right in here. When I start getting in here, I kind of just, I try not to get any paint on this flat part because then when I roll over it, it will show. Um, I don't find it to be that big of a deal, but it's not something I, I it's something I do try to consciously not, it's something I try to avoid. And um, I'm even going to grab a small art brush. To get like this. I buy these at Michael's in a bag. Uh, and there's a whole bunch. The piece is upside down. Yeah, I do. I, I use a light hand. You tend to be heavy hand. I, I use a lot of paint. And that's why we're doing this blue. Because I know myself and I like to use a lot of paint. Um... I don't know that, I don't know, I, I've never actually even thought about if I'm heavy handed or light handed when I'm just painting a plain color. But I'm using a little art brush right now to just get in these little crevices, um, just to kind of get down in there because this shelf isn't like totally connected. There's a little gap right here. You can't see. Hey Lee, hi Allison. This is like Cubby's blue, isn't it? Cobalt blue, Cubby's blue. Right? <laughs> I'm not into sports. I'll tell you guys a story. Let me turn this so we can see. I'm gonna just paint this. This side here, I'm gonna paint my top. I didn't paint the top in front, uh, but I'll go back and do that. So right now my daughter has her first soccer practice and my husband took her. I didn't play sports growing up. So, I, I mean, I played soccer when I was like five. You know, I played softball like one year and I, you know, asked if I could play the bench because I hated sports. You ordered this color, Anissa? This, this color is awesome. Um, and so my daughter, she's played soccer for like three years. She really likes it. She definitely has more of an athletic ability than I do. So I took her to Meyer like an hour ago. You know, her practice was at six. I take her to Meyer, which is like our 
you know, our, our Walmart grocery store, whatever. It's like fancier than Walmart, but it's pretty much Walmart. I take her and um, I get her a ball, right? I got her a really pretty ball, like, a, you know, a really colorful soccer ball. So I get home, she's outside in the yard, she's kicking it around, like having a great time. You know, my husband goes to take her and he comes inside and he says, hey Leah, come here. And I'm like, okay. Oh, they're on the same team, yay, Anna. She, I was wondering, she's at practice right now too. Um, sorry, like squirrel, squirrel trail here. Um, so you'll, you'll enjoy this. So my husband comes inside, he goes, Hey Leah, come here. And I'm like, what? You want me to come all the way downstairs? Or like, do you want, can I just like talk to you over the balcony? He's like, oh, the balcony will be fine. And he takes the ball and he puts it in his hand and he hits it up like a volleyball. Because it, it is, a, it is a volleyball. It's a volleyball. I bought the girl a volleyball and I didn't even realize it. I, like, I know the difference between a soccer ball and a volleyball, but I just didn't know it in the store. So this poor kid had to go to soccer, first practice of the season, <laughs> with a volleyball. Like I just, that, that's the kind of mom I am. Just, I get my kid a soccer ball for a volleyball, or a, a volleyball for a soccer ball. So needless to say, we will be going back to the store and buying a, you know, a soccer ball. So that is, um, that, that's my Friday night. I'll be going to buy another, I'll be going to buy another ball. So I'm basically just going to get all these edges here and then I'm going to run to the top. But if you can see, um, basically what I'm going to do is I will go around this whole thing and it has primer on it and it's going to need two coats of paint. I don't see the point in painting the back because I think if you guys see the front, you kind of get the idea. But this is just a good way for you guys to kind of know what to expect. Um, and then when you come around this side too, you're also going to realize that you miss like half the thing. Um, I do it every single time. So I just take my brush and get the paint on. Another thing I do, I do actually... I keep wipes handy usually. I have some right there. In case I get paint on here. Your girls were <laughs> competitive cheerleaders. Oh, I'm glad that cheered you up, Raylan. My daughter was not too happy, but. Anyway, if I get a drip right here, I wipe it with a baby wipe. Um, and then you can also like, Spritzing your piece with water too helps, you know, move and smooth your paint. But you will be able to see, you know, your brush strokes. So I'm just gonna get around this back here and then we're gonna get to the top. And the reason I'm gonna get this right here is because if this dries on one side, um, and then doesn't like, and I don't paint it, it, it'll leave a funny, like you'll be able to tell that you like stopped, let it dry and then came back to it. So I like to just do them in completion. Paint this edge here. I don't always get these bottom edges, but I try to. And then in this little corner here, I'm just gonna grab my artist brush. And then I promise we'll move right to the top and we'll do a flat area. But these are just some good tips for you guys to get a professional finish. Dixie Bell paint is not hard. We still there? 
I was getting a phone call. And I put the do not disturb on, so I don't know how I had a phone call. What's the craziest thing that happened to me this week, Anissa? I just told them. You weren't here. I bought a volleyball instead of a soccer ball. That's the craziest thing that happened to me. Like, I am that mom. How's Mac doing? How are your kids doing? Yeah, that's the craziest thing that comes to mind. Like, who, who, who even does that? And my husband, he was like, a while ago, he's like, you know, why don't you ever like volunteer and, you know, like be, like be an assistant soccer coach? I'm like, cause I don't, I can't even buy a soccer ball. How am I gonna be a soccer coach? I don't know. I don't know. It's cobalt blue. It's cobalt blue. I'll teach, you know, like I'll teach painting or something, but I'm not gonna teach soccer. All right, we're, we're gonna move because I want you guys to think that's actually a pretty good angle. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now, um, I'm not gonna use my brush, but I don't want my paint to dry on my brush. So I either use like plastic sandwich bags or this is like a wet wipe. So I'm just gonna like set this on the wet wipe and just kind of wrap it because the thing's wet. It's not Cubby's blue, it's Royal's blue. Now you guys are talking sports and I'm like, is Royal even, like, is that even a baseball team? I don't know. I don't know. I know the Cubs. I've been to games, but I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave it like this because I think you guys can actually see it. But you can see I orbit sanded this. And um, this has crevices, right? So I have to think about how I'm gonna do this. I got my blue paint, I have my spray bottle. I have a foam plate and a roller. So I'm just gonna spritz my roller, first of all. Just kind of get a little water in here. Hi, Teresa, thanks for being here. Um, and I'm going to just pull this straight. Now, I should be able to pretty much mush just the, um, the chalk paint in here. But maybe, maybe not. And if we can't, we'll troubleshoot that. Um, I don't want to actually pull my brush through first because I don't feel like I can get the paint on quick enough to, um, to like even it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a spoon because this has some dried, like your paint as you use it will dry around the top. Hi Rhonda, thank you for sharing. You have to try this color, it is pretty. It's cobalt blue. Even though tree frog green is what you guys chose, I, I didn't have enough tree frog green. Um, so I'm gonna use a spoon because I don't want the dried paint on the edge to go, go on my plate. So I'm just gonna spoon it onto my plate. And if it does, I mean, it's okay. We can just sand it off, but. Now I'm gonna put four spoonfuls on and I'm just gonna leave my spoon in here and set this up. This is cobalt blue. Um, Dodgers blue, you guys are talking sports teams and I'm like, Whew. it's it's cobalt blue. You know, like like the car. All right. And um, <laughs> I'm just teasing you guys. So anyway, this is, I'm just gonna roll this in and I'm gonna like get it wet on both sides. And as I'm, I'm kinda just wanna get the paint in my roller at this point. Okay. And I'm gonna mist, I'm gonna mist my table just because I find when I have a little bit of water on it, it makes it easier. And I'm actually, I don't wanna run out of water when I'm doing a flat surface. So I'm just gonna pour more water in here. Just to 
be sure. Okay. All right. So we have enough water. I'm just gonna pump it. All right. So we have enough water. I'm setting that on the shelf behind me. So when I'm like, where's my water? You guys can say it's on the shelf behind you. So we just have a little bit of water. Might be a little too much. I'm just gonna dry up where I spilled it. So you just kind of want to mist it a little bit. And then a lot of times, you can do your edge first. And in fact, if I was using a brush, I would do my edge first. Um, but I really need to get some of this paint off of here. And it really would be smart to do my edge first. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab another plate and roll this out a little bit because I wanna teach you guys the right way. And basically I just need to roll my roller out and get it like moving, right? Because we don't wanna put like paint right here because it'll just drip. So you're trying to get the kids to clean the kitchen. Good luck. This, what type of roller? This is a fine roller. And I keep these in my shop all the time. And you know, like these are the refills, but it's just a sponge roller. And you can get them at Home Depot or Menards. And I'm just gonna go ahead and roll my edge here because it's flat. And I just wanna get the edge first so I don't get like a funny looking lip. I use these a lot for primer. I use these, I just use these a lot. Uh, if you guys have a Menards, they have like 11% rebate, like every other week. And so I just go in Menards and I stock up on stuff like this. Cobalt blue, Cubby's blue, and all the other sports teams blue that you guys are saying that I don't know. All right, so this was my plate. I just kind of rolled it off, okay, to kind of get the paint even on my sponge roller. And now I'm just dipping it in my paint. And I'm gonna press pretty hard. I do have a primer on here. I don't wanna press so hard that it like is gonna seep over the edge. And this is my first coat. Another thing I do is I just dip my tip in here, right? And I'll run it down the center here. And like I said before, I didn't want to do this with a brush because I didn't think I could like get my, um, I'm just gonna do it right here. I didn't think I could get my brush in my hand and then use my roller and go all the way across, but I know I can use my roller. So it makes it a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier. And I'm just gonna put a thin coat, okay? I know that I'm gonna have to come back and use another, I'm gonna have to do another coat. So we're just gonna get that on. And we're trying to kind of move quick. Because it, it dries fast and it's super hot in here, so it is, it's drying really quick today. And we need more. And at this point, I'm really glad we didn't use Tree Frog Green because I knew I would have ran out. Um, so with Dixie Belle paint too, I'll tell you guys, I uh, some furniture artists are like, you know, they can use an eight ounce and get they can paint like six dressers. I can paint like six drawers. Like I I, I use a lot of paint, um, and I'm doing a pretty thin coat, but I tend to be I tend to use a lot of product. Whatever I do use, I. Um, I think more is more. But honestly, like this will be a pretty thin coat. I have to contain myself a little bit. But I want to roll my line this way because this board is going this way and then make sure I don't have um, a, a, like, a, like a little, like, a spot where you can see that I rolled over it. So that's what we're doing right now. I'm just gonna get this in this crevice. And then I'll look up and see if you guys have questions. But you really just wanna work fast.
Um, and honestly, I, I, I say that doing tops are hard because they're hard for me. Uh, you may do a top and be like, this is so easy, but smooth painting is not, um, I, I'm not, I'm not as skilled with smooth painting. So sometimes I find that that might, that might be good for you guys. Cause then you guys are like, oh, well, you know, you guys get all my, my tips on how to do things when they're hard for you. You can see that you can still see the imperfections of the table. This will be dry in at least in about a half hour. Okay, so we're pretty good. So I'm just gonna go back and make sure I don't have any heavy spots, that everything's pretty even. Right here, I have a little area. Thank you for sharing, Teresa. Um, I have a little area right here that needs paint, and now I'll use my brush because I don't want to like push my thing in there. If you guys have problems too, you can always use a little bit of water. But we're actually looking pretty good. I'm just gonna get these little spots right here. And I'm gonna leave the top. Um, it's not totally perfect, but once it dries, now since there's a little bit of, um, there's the crevices, it'll take longer to dry. So it will, um, it'll take a little bit longer to dry than, um, it'll just take longer to dry because it's deeper, right? So I'm going to move this table this way and we're going to do the center. And we're just going to keep going. If you guys have any heavy spots on the top, um, if you guys do, if you guys have any heavy spots on the top, then I will, um, then I will, then I would just sand it out. So let's do the center here. Thank you, Nissa. Thank you. Um, all right, let's put this down a little. All right. It seems like a lot of you guys are actually interested in this, which is good. Like I said, like a lot of times I think we go live and um, it's always with something that is a technique. And so I think it's really good for you guys to actually see how to do this. Thank you, Shirley. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do this right here. Are any of you guys, I'm um, coming, gonna be in Oklahoma. I'm gonna be in Oklahoma City. I just booked a flight. Um, I'm gonna use the paint on my plate to paint this. I'm doing an in-person class with the Turquoise Iris on April 27th. It's a Saturday in Moore, Oklahoma. I've never been to Oklahoma, but um, I'm doing a painting class with her. And so if you guys can make it out, we would love to have you. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to teach. You guys kind of get to sit back and relax. Um, I've never been to a painting class, and I've never taught in person. So this will be fun. I, you know, I've painted in front of people for a benefit, but not like. Um, so if you guys can come out, we would love to have you. Uh, Quita Allen is going to be there too, which I'm super excited about. Um, I wish you could be there too, Trina. I would love to meet you. But it's going to be a really good experience. So I just, um, I'm just going to get under here like I said I was, right? Because we want to make sure that our piece is complete and concise. And um, if you guys go ahead and share this video and comment that you share, you know, but I want, I don't want you to just share it to share it. Share it like, and share it with somebody who you think could actually, who wants to start furniture painting or needs, um, that you know who, who needs like just the beginner skills because those are the things that like 
you know, that we just, that you don't ever see. And that's, that's really all this is. This is some, some beginner skills for you guys. Um, and I'll go ahead and do a paint giveaway today and I'll give an eight ounce paint of Dixie Belle, a color of your choice, um, away today for yourself. You don't have to use the primer with their paint, but I recommend that you do. Um, but yeah, like share it with somebody who actually, you know, can use the knowledge. Let's share some of the, let's share some tips with people. Paint can transform your home. Except mine, because I paint for everybody else's houses and never my own. <laughs> Let me um, find my spray bottle. Okay. So, um, let's see. Shared. Thank you. So, your daughter wants to learn and my family wants to paint her pine bedroom set. Yeah. You know what? If you're going to paint pine, you're going to want to use a primer for sure. If you're painting pine, you probably want to use two coats of primer. Um, and I say that because, like, pine has knots in it and the knots will bleed. Um, so if you're gonna paint pine, um, just make sure you use a good primer. Smug. I don't even know if 16 ounces is going to be enough. We'll see. And then I also have people message me a lot and ask me what size uh, paint to get. And like, I, I it's more cost efficient to order the 16 ounce, but I like the eight ounces because like I said, the paint dries at the top. So it's easier for me to, um, it's easier for me to get rid of the and not have that issue. make sure you guys don't have any questions. I would do two coats if you're using it on pine. And um, emboss comes in white and it comes in clear. And the clear is like for this where we're painting a darker color and the white would be for if you're painting a lighter color. And I would use two because like pine is hard. Um, not, I should not say that pine is hard. Pine's not hard. If you prime, pine pine's a very soft wood. But if you um, the the knots in pine, especially if you're doing white or a very clean look, will bleed, and you don't want them to bleed. So I'm just gonna come around here and make sure this is complete. What other questions do you guys have? I know this is a simple live, but I'm just hoping that it'll help you guys who are just starting. Okay. Whew. Your mother loved the color. Noel, Anissa. What's your What's your middle name, Anissa? Okay, so Stephanie painted her furniture and used two coats of primer and had no issues. What's the easiest color to sell? Uh, I am not a Dixie Belle retailer. I'm a brand ambassador, so I don't really, I don't really know what colors sell the best. Um, I, if you guys see, I have an affiliate link, um, and I only sell from my affiliate link. So when you order from me, I earn a credit and that helps me keep bringing like these tutorials to you guys. But I don't actually like, I don't actually know what you order. Sorry, I was getting a call. Um, but for me, the, the color that sells the best is blue, like on furniture. So 
So I'm just getting my artist brush and getting in here and then we're gonna do this surface too. Um, so what other questions do you guys have? Did Anissa tell us her middle name? I'm gonna do the whole table in, in cobalt and um, I'm going to highlight it in either black wax or tree frog green. All right, let's get this right here. So in this area too, this, this little artist brush is the best for getting in here. Um, and that, 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 having a little artist brush on hand, um, it's good for getting in the little tiny spots that, um, that are, that, so you don't have to like smoosh your brush in there, right? We don't want to do that. So we're going to just move this table and I'm just going to paint this core bell. I don't, it's not a core bell, but this column and then this top, but that'll give you guys some time. If you guys have questions, you can ask. I had like a cute outfit on and my friend Dion, she always paints and she doesn't like get any paint on her and me, I get paint on me like if I even walk in here. Black scares you. Um, black is, uh, I don't know. Black is one of those colors that scared me too. I didn't actually do black until, sometimes I say things like I didn't do black until like last month, but then I'll think I, I actually did do black. I forget, um, but I just, I just started doing like a lot more black and I really love the caviar from Dixie Belle because it's a true black. I really like the, I really like, like black painted furniture. Um, and what color would I blend with red? I don't even know. I'm thinking about actually putting together like a chalk painting course for you guys. Um, Cause there's a lot of tips on here, but I think sometimes it's, I think sometimes you feel intimidated when you go to paint furniture. Um, Cause there is, there, you know, there is steps. It's not hard, but there are some steps. I'm gonna leave this for now, for the sake of time. We're gonna turn this. Ooh. Okay. Good night, Jackie. Dixie Belle also has different primers. Um, so like where this primer, this boss primer is good for this piece. Um, we also have slick stick, which is good for other pieces that might be a little bit more slippery. Okay. So now that I have it all painted, I'm going to go ahead. And since this part here has a ridge, I'm going to just, I'm just gonna do this here. And I'm gonna tell you guys too, um, I should probably say this, I'm always bad at like not telling you guys these things. I have a service on my page, it's $45 for a half hour. Um, and in that I offer 
like create like if you guys need help designing a piece of furniture and you're not exactly sure and you want some like individualized attention on how to paint that piece of furniture um i do have that like service available for you guys um and that way like we can look at pictures and i can show you i can tell you how to get the steps um, to get your that look or what would look good on certain pieces of furniture. So I do have that service on my page. Um, if you're interested, just message me. Um, this is pretty simple, just one color. So I'm going to go ahead and dish out a little bit more of this cobalt blue on here with my spoon. But that's like, you know, if you just need a little bit more attention and you're like, I just don't know how to paint this piece of furniture um, or I'm not exactly sure what steps to take. I do have that service available. So I'm going to go ahead. This is one of the things I do a little different when I have these like little edges here. I'm, gonna, um, I'm just going to pull this paint a little bit right here. Okay. And then I'm just going to roll it out. And I'll get my edges on the second. I'll actually let this coat dry and I'll get my edges on the second coat because I didn't want to have to move this table. Um, but no, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I like using the sponge rollers because they, they apply the paint pretty evenly. And the Dixie Belle paint responds well to them. Um, the self-leveling feature of like Dixie Belle paint really makes a difference in, in your pieces. Thank you, Sherry. Like glass or metal. I'm not sure what you mean. You can use Dixie Belle paint on um, glass and metal. All right, and we're just gonna go ahead. All right, we got our cubbies blue on. Okay, it's really cobalt blue, but It is an amazing color. So I'm just gonna pull this as far as I can. seal this piece and if you guys are ordering um paint i want you guys to like remember this um i use this first so dixie bell has two like they have a lot of sealers but the two i use the most of and i find are the most um the the strongest this is clear coat satin and then there's gator hide um i prefer i'm going to gator hide this because i can imagine this is going to be high traffic. This is going to have baskets on it. Like they're shelving. Like people don't buy a table like this to not put things on it. So um, they could very easily be a high traffic table. So what I will do is I'll put the clear coat on it first. And the reason I use the clear coat first, and I say this all the time, is because it's a softer, uh, it's a softer finish. Okay. And, um, it will absorb into your paint as like your first coat. And then after I put that on, I will put the gator hide on and I find that that creates a stronger bond. 
um, not, uh, no, no, it doesn't create a stronger bond. This is what it does. The clear coat absorbs into the paint, okay? It absorbs into the paint a lot easier because it's thicker and it moves around easier. So it's a lot easier to put it on this really dry chalk paint, the clear coat, okay? And then I go on, I only put one coat of that on usually, and then I go ahead and put one to two to three coats of Gator Hide on top of that. And I do that because I find that if I just put the Gator Hide directly on here, it, it'll streak. I have a higher chance of it streaking, especially when I'm doing a clean, clean look. So I think that that is like, that is my number one tip for you guys. Like if you're, when you're doing your top coat, I really prefer to do the clear satin um, first and then put the gator hide on top. Uh, and with that too, I prefer those, those two top coats are way stronger than wax. So how many coats of clear coat and how many coats of gator hide? So you did that the other day, Dan, and you found it went on better? Yes, yes. Um, I do like one coat of clear coat usually. Usually only one coat of clear coat and then um, I put the gator hide on, a uh, one to two to three, pretty much until it looks like, um, it looks uniform. Like if the gator hide looks a little streaky, I add another coat, but then you also don't wanna build it too high, so I usually try not to go over like three coats. So, oh, Dan, I'm happy, thank you. Um, that's good to know, Sandy says, that's good to know gator hide was streaky for you yesterday. Yes, I definitely find that if I just put gator hide directly on my furniture, it does um, it does get streaky. And if I put that clear coat barrier on first, it's better. And that's this. And the difference between this, this is water resistant. So it's like water can still kind of get through. Um, and gator hide is water repellent. So, um, I sold shoes at Bass Pro Shop when I was like 18 and like there's a big difference between water resistant and water repellent and the Gator Hide's water repellent, but they kind of work really well together and Dixie Bell can, uh, Dixie Bell's top coats also work really well together. So like Dixie Bell's, all their top coats, um, you can spray it with like easy peasy spray wax and then put clear coat on top and you're okay. So not to confuse you guys too much like my my recommendation would be to use the clear coat and then the gator hide uh you can stand between sure you you know i don't always but you notice it streaks yeah i notice it streak too and i'm like what can we do to make this streaking stop and just because that that clear coat's just a little bit thicker so it helps all right you guys so i'm gonna um get off here and finish painting this table and uh go buy a soccer ball tonight so Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for sharing. And um, I'm gonna pick up someone to win some paint tonight too. Why not, right? It's the weekend. Let's see. You guys always have to comment that you shared or I don't see it. Rhonda, Rhonda Sabanis, Sabins. But she shared from Massachusetts. Rhonda, go ahead and message my page. Um, with your name, phone number, email, and address, and the color you would like, and I will get some paint out to you. So thank you guys for joining, and I will see you guys, um, I'll see you guys next week. I'm going to take the weekend off, so have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.